Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania, the first entry in the Marvel Cinematic Universe's Phase 5, is due out in a few weeks on February 17th, and Box Office Pro has some early predictions based on box office ticket pre-sales of what opening weekend may look like, along with its entirety of the domestic box office run. Furthermore, we have some new information from Kevin Feige, his thoughts basically in a recent interview on some of the mistakes, perhaps at least when he suggests that they made in phase four and what he's looking forward to in phase five. Let's get into it. Well, welcome back, folks. Another great day here at Valiant Renegade. It's great to see everybody out there once again. And if you are like one of the many folks watching this video not yet subscribed to this channel, please take a moment, make sure that you are subscribed, and then hit that notification bell. Hit the like button for this video. Share this sucker out on the social medias. And of course, please do leave a comment below it before you head out the door today. Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania is hoping to launch Phase 5 into better financial territory than what Marvel envisioned for Phase 4. A lot of those movies in Phase 4, while they performed exceptionally well overall in box office grosses, did not perform up to Disney's expectations for sure when you consider how much money that company spent not only producing those films, but also marketing them and putting them into theaters. We've covered that ad nauseum here on Valiant Renegade. You can go back and watch those videos to find out exactly what I mean. But let's look at the past performance of Ant-Man 1 and 2, and maybe we can get a sense of what's going to happen here. The first two entries were certainly not among Marvel's top performers at the box office, but the audiences did seem to have mostly positive reception to them. I myself, a big fan of Paul Rudd and of Evangeline Lilly, but this is not one of those characters that really brings in the big audiences like many of the other movies do. But one of the things, as we stated in the previous video, that both Ant-Man movies had going for it in comparison to its Marvel peer group is that it had a very low budget of around $130 million. Now, $130 million for each of those two movies still sounds like a lot of money, and you'd be right, but when you compare it to $180 million or $200 million or $250 million for some of the most recent Marvel Cinematic Universe entries, you can see how Ant-Man really performs well on the financial side of things, even with its lower box office returns. The big question at this point, of course, is, what will the budget for this new Ant-Man movie be? I highly doubt it's still going to be in the $130 million range, but I hope for its own sake, considering the performance of the previous two films, that it doesn't approach the $250 million thresholds that we saw with Thor Love and Thunder or more recently Black Panther 2 Wakanda Forever. Even Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness came in with a roughly $200 million budget, which I suspect was a little bit higher, considering a lot of the extensive last-minute reshoots that that movie had to go through. So if this movie, the new Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, performs relatively on par, even if we do some inflationary adjustments from the previous entry back in 2018, we're looking at a box office performance that may come in around 700 to maybe $800 million if it does really well, if it exceeds that point and blows it out of the water with a great story and a great movie that audiences come into weekend after weekend. In other words, it grows a good set of legs. Maybe it approaches the $1 billion mark because this is the first movie since 2019 where we're really bringing in a major overarching villain that is supposed to be the one that is going to carry through phases five and six, namely Kang the Conqueror. But that being said, if we look back to 2015, the overall domestic box office for the first Ant-Man was $180 million. The second Ant-Man, three years later, didn't fare too much better. However, if we do some quick inflationary adjustments, roughly the same audience size showed up for the second as it did the first. The worldwide box office, relatively similar. We saw almost $520 million for the first and $623 million for the second. 
If we look to the international box office for the first movie, about $105 million, almost $106 million of its global total came from China. Again, its global total was 518. If you pulled China out, the first Ant-Man movie really only did about $400 million globally. And on the second Ant-Man movie, China represented about $120 million of the movie's total $623 million. Now, to compare to Marvel Phase 4, let's pull the Chinese numbers out for a moment, as none of the Phase 4 films got a Chinese release date, with the exception recently of Black Panther 2 Wakanda Forever being added to the Chinese slate around February 7th, just about 10 days before Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania is set to release in China. I don't suspect that that's going to give Black Panther 2 much of a boost, because at this point, that movie has been out nearly three months. And let's face it, video piracy in China is rampant. If anybody in China has wanted to see that movie up until this point, they probably already have. But the good news for Quantumania is that it is getting a Chinese release date on or about the same day, February 17th, as the rest of the globe. Now, will Ant-Man and the Wasp still manage to pull a 100 plus million dollar haul from China? I think it's very possible, especially when you consider the Chinese theatrical market has been starved for a good while at this point, about a year of a lot of big content, big major blockbuster content. And I think at least a part of the reason that we saw a recent change in the regime at Disney to Mr. Bob Iger and now recently announced, as we've covered, the incoming chairman within a month or two of Mr. Mark Parker of the Nike Corporation is to rekindle that relationship with China. And I'm sure a lot of my audience out there is going to have some commentary on that, and that's fine. We're just going to cover it for what it is. Mark Parker and Nike obviously has a lot of brand recognition in China. They've had partnerships there, if you can call them partnerships, for many, many years. And a lot of their production is done in China. And I think that was one of the driving factors for Disney to name Mr. Mark Parker to that board of directors as the chairman. So let's look at what Box Office Pro has come up with based on early pre-sales for theater tickets for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Now, the headline of this may seem a little ridiculous. Will this become 2023's first $100 million plus dollar opener? It's not as if there's been a terrible amount of competition up to this point. Preliminary social metrics, trailer imprints, and the first three days of pre-sales this week line up with expected parameters for this particular Marvel sequel at this stage of the pre-release cycle. With President's Day on Monday in mind, Three- and four-day weekend trajectories will benefit from those off work and out of school for the holiday. Marketing and trailer releases have permeated media in recent weeks, raising awareness and specifically igniting conversation around the feature film introduction of Kang, played by Jonathan Majors, increasingly known to represent the franchise's next arc-based villain. But let's look at some of the cons that they mention, and I think they're being very fair here. Phase four of the MCU was demonstrably the most challenging of the franchise in terms of audience reception, with several theatrical entries and Disney Plus series combining to generate sentiment, not quite reaching the high bar Marvel previously set for itself. Prior Ant-Man films have been comparably insular in terms of storytelling, so it remains to be seen how the wider ranging and traversing implications of Quantumania impact upfront audience interest versus long-term playability as the MCU overall has become increasingly front-loaded. And that very front-loaded nature of many, if not all, of the Marvel Cinematic Universe films in the last 12 to 18 months has been a point of contention, and it has been a big point of discussion here on Valiant Renegade. As I've stated many times, the trend has become that if a Marvel movie comes out within the first five days or so on average, Nearly half of the entire box office is already baked in. We've seen that time and time again, especially in 2022 with Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, followed by Thor Love and Thunder, followed by Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I don't know if much is going to change for Ant-Man, but what I continue to remind folks is the key is the legs on a movie. After opening weekend, our audience is going to go tell all their friends that they have to go see this. It's amazing. And are those audiences going to return two and three times to go see it? 
That's the kind of audience reaction you have to get to have a Top Gun Maverick style of performance where audiences return over and over and drive the grosses to $1.5 billion. And speaking of north of $1 billion grosses, at this point in the game and with ticket prices where they are now, it's almost inexcusable for a Marvel Cinematic Universe film, a film that is usually going to have a $200 million average budget in this day and age, plus another $150 plus million in marketing, for them not to reach or at least get very close to the $1 billion mark. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness was the one that got the closest in 2022 following a big high from Sony Pictures' Spider-Man No Way Home. What they want with an opening of Phase 5, I think, is for people to really forget some of the lulls and, frankly, boredom of Phase 4 that was really inarguably a very disjointed mess. Back to Box Office Pro, though not necessarily a point against the film, pre-sales comparisons will be challenging against recent Marvel releases due to the time of year. And that's mostly talking about the fact that there hasn't really been a February release for a Marvel Cinematic Universe in quite some time. Based on independent sampling, Quantumania is currently generating around 76% of total opening day, that's Thursday previews and True Friday combined pre-sales, from Thursday by itself, relative to Black Panther Wakanda Forever's 66% and Doctor Strange's 61% Thursday share at the same point in time after sales began. Now, what that seems to suggest is that perhaps this Ant-Man movie, at least at this point in the pre-sales cycle, does appear to be even more front-loaded than the other films mentioned. And that's not a good thing for Marvel, but time will tell. Again, it's all about the audience reaction to this film. If it is as mediocre as the last three or four Marvel films, taking out Sony's Spider-Man No Way Home for a minute, then this opener for Marvel's Phase 5 could be in trouble. And here's the projections based on the first few days of ticket pre-sales. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, with an opening domestically in the U.S. and Canada of between $96 and $131 million for a total domestic box office run of, again, their projections, between $249 and $347 million. Now, if we go back and compare that to the previous two entries, even the low end of those projections would beat Ant-Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp from 2015 and 2018, respectively. And it's the way it should be, considering how inflated ticket prices have become since those last two movies released. And I think that's exactly what Kevin Feige is hoping for at this point. This article comes to us from our friends at Bounding Into Comics, where Kevin Feige admits that if Marvel Studios doesn't entertain first, their social messaging will fall on deaf ears. Feige elaborated, Frank Capra has a quote that our co-president Luis D'Esposito quotes often, which is basically to distill down to entertain first. You can have as many beautiful messages and beautiful life theories and beautiful thematics that you want to put into the world that all of us do and all of our filmmakers do. But if you're not entertaining first, it will fall on deaf ears. And I think that was very much a theme of phase four, a disjointed mess of half-hearted storytelling where one movie did not connect to another which in any other IP or franchise or movie that is written in Hollywood is certainly not necessarily a sin. But in the case of the MCU, that is the expectation that has been built over a decade and what has driven massive financial returns, not only at the box office, but in post-theatrical revenue as well, between rentals and sales of digital downloads and physical media, not to mention all the merchandising. And we have covered extensively here on Valiant Renegade, along with WDW Pro of that parkplace.com, how much that has suffered in phase four from the financial side of things. So that's it. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. Make sure you share this video out. Make sure you're subscribed to it and you've hit the like button. And stay tuned because we will be covering the earnings call live 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. For Comcast, that's NBC Universal, their associated Universal theme parks, Peacock streaming, all that good stuff. Don't miss that one. Until next time, take care.